I often get asked the question, what kind of harmonium should I buy? And the short answer is, it's going to very much depend on what's available to you in your area. Um, so, ideally, if you have a dealer in your area, that's a great place to start because you can go um, speak to them, try a few different instruments, um, ask questions, questions. Also, you know, when the instrument gets shipped, it goes through, you know, temperature and humidity changes and it gets banged around a little bit. So having a dealer that's actually receiving the instruments and then tuning them, tightening the screws, you know, prepping them uh, for sale is actually a really, really good thing. Uh, but not everybody has a dealer in their area. So I have often bought my instruments uh, on the secondhand market. And you know, one good thing about that is that I can buy an instrument, uh, touch, touch it, play it for a while, you know, feel around on it, discover what I maybe like or don't like about the instrument, and then like resell it, uh, Craigslist, Facebook, on one of the resale markets, and then buy a different one. So that's, that's kind of what I've done for a few instruments now. I would buy one, play on it a while, kind of discover um, that it wasn't, you know, like maybe I wanted, like for example on this one, a little bit more sustain or like a different timbre quality of um, the sort of tone. Uh, and then there's also things I don't totally love about this instrument, which I'm also finding out, but you, you can kind of that way sort of try one for a while and see how you like it. Um, there are a, a few reputable brands, you know, Paloma, Vina, Bhakti, Maharaj, but that isn't everything, right? And especially if it's your first instrument and it's your first um, harmonium, go with something that you can afford and is accessible to you and is relatively <laughs> in tune. And I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Um, but, you know, just find something that functions so that you can just practice getting your hands on the instrument first. Then you can start to, like, refine what, you, um, what you're looking for. Or, you know, if you have friends that have them or if you're teaching at a studio that has one, if you're practicing at a studio that has one, definitely, like, ask first um, if you can touch the harmonium because they are, you know, they do... Um, get a lot of, you know, expected wear at the studio. So they may not want, you know, studios, to, uh, students just coming up and, and touching them willy nilly. But, uh, you know, if you can kind of test some things out, that's also a great idea. Um, you know, again, a, a first instrument doesn't have to be much. It just really needs to be functional for you to start um, practicing. And, um, and there's a pretty big price difference between sort of, um, you know, sort of standard everyday harmoniums and the like professional level harmoniums. So you'll, you'll see that pretty wide gap between uh, those two categories. And, you know, definitely, you know, I, I've been playing now for like 15 years. I'm by no means, you know, good. <laughs> I'm very average at it. But, uh, but I really only need the sort of like, you know, entry level pricing of, uh, of harmoniums. Um, you know, uh, so the other thing is if you are buying secondhand, it is good to just know at least, um, a little bit how to, how to kind of interact with the machine to see if it's, uh, if it's playable, right? So let's go through a couple of those uh, um, things right now so that you could, if you're buying from, you know, Joe down the street, that you could um, sort of assess if a harmonium is playable and relatively in tune. These here, these are the um, stoppers which need to be open in order for the instrument to make a sound. Um, you know, if you're just testing one out and you're not sure what arrangement of stoppers you might like to play with in the future, just a safe one is to do is like every other one maybe. 
just to open it up and let some sound come out. Uh, the second thing is the, the action on the bellows here. Uh, if you, now you shouldn't do this often, but if you pump it and sound is already coming out, that could indicate a problem, <laughs> but you shouldn't be in the habit of pumping it without having some keys held down. So the keys we're going to hold down specifically is we're going to hold down an octave. So an octave is the span of notes uh, between eight whole notes. So we're gonna do we're gonna start with this low C and middle C, and we're gonna play that, and it should sound like the two notes are in coherence with each other, in resonance with each other, right? And then I'm gonna work my way up the keyboard. It should sound like they're just really in conjunction with each other. If you get a weird sound, right, I had to play a different note to show a weird sound, but if you're playing the exact octave and you're getting an odd sound, that's a sign that that key is out of tune. So you're gonna work your way all the way up. And all the way up on the black keys as well. Now, if I was buying my first harmonium and, you know, one note was out of tune and it's a note I barely ever use in the higher registers, I probably wouldn't mind too much about it if the price is right and if it's a practice harmonium right um if if a lot of things are out of tune you might reconsider um you you and it again it also depends how easy it is to find someone who can tune it in your area right so if it's going to be very hard to find someone who can tune it i would maybe steer clear if it's already showing signs of being out of so I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, if you have any additional questions or anything I forgot to cover, uh, please leave a comment below.